If you're a user of VoiceOver in macOS, there are two settings that I think you should change from the default to make your life easier as a VoiceOver warrior. If you ever notice that sometimes when you go to press the FN key, it brings up the emoji palette. And also if you want to press VOF8 to open VoiceOver utilities, you got to press VOFNF8. And both of those things can make your life a little cumbersome. I'm going to show you how to change those settings so you can just press VOF8 and to get FN key to stop bringing up the emoji palette. Plus a bonus tip at the end for adjusting your volume, especially for everyone that's using a touch bar Mac. Hey everyone, this is the Oreo Monster and you're watching Logic.Band. It's a place full of tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you as a blind Logic Mac OS and voiceover user. If you haven't already, then please visit Logic.Band, the website associated with the channel. And right there on the homepage, you'll find a form where you can sign up for the mailing list to get yourself a free getting started with Logic course. And if you'd also like some bonus in-depth tutorials and to attend a Q&A with me where I answer your questions in person, then hit the join button on this video and support Logic Band by becoming a member of the channel. And with that out of the way. So today we're going to talk about a couple things you may want to turn off to make your life as a voice over warrior go a lot smoother these are both going to be in system settings in the keyboard settings if you don't know how to get to system settings i'll show you one way you can do that i'm just going to press vom menu bar apple and then you can view down arrow apple about this map system settings ellipsis and there we have system settings if you view space on this this will open the system settings dialog closing menu now in appearance window sidebar table row 14 of 37 appearance selected puts us on this sidebar table with a parent selected. Now you can up and down arrow without holding down the voiceover keys to get to keyboard, which is what we're looking for, or you can interact with this. And sidebar, table, row 14 of 38, appearance. And once you interact, you can view up or down. Accessibility, control center. Or you can do what I like to do, which is just hit the letter K. Keyboard. And that puts us on keyboard. So I'm gonna stop interacting. Sidebar, tape. And view right from the sidebar. Vertical splitter, keyboard, scroll area. And I'm going to interact with that keyboard scroll area. In keyboard, scroll area. And I'm going to view right because the first thing we want to do is change what the FN key does. By default in Mac OS, if you press the FN key, it brings up the emoji palette, which can get in the way if you need to use the FN key to do certain things, especially if you're on a laptop keyboard and you need to use like FN left or right arrow to do home and end. So I'm going to view right. 60, adjust keyboard, bright, adjust keyboard brightness and keyboard brightness, reduce brightness, 24 point, increase brightness, turn keyboard backlight off after an act, never, turn press globe symbol with meridians, key two. And that's what we're looking for, press globe symbol with meridian. So the globe symbol with meridian is how voiceover describes the FN key. And if you're on a laptop, that's going to be the key in the bottom left corner. So that bottom row of your keyboard is going to be FN control option command and then the space bar. But voiceover is going to call it globe symbol with meridian. So if we be all right. Show emoji and symbols. Press globe symbol with meridians. Key to pop up button. So you see that's a pop up button. And it says uh, right now when you press the globe symbol with meridian, it shows the emoji and symbols palette. But we want to set that to do nothing. So I'm going to view space on menu, this. Menu, four item, menu, four, change input source, check mark, show emoji and sim, start dictation, press do nothing. You are currently on a menu item. To choose this menu item, press control, option, space. To so I'm going to view space to select this. Closing menu, do nothing, press globe symbol with meridians, key to pop up button. And now you see we set it to do nothing. So now when you press the F and key, it should do nothing. So it shouldn't get in the way of you trying to use key commands like say control FN left arrow for control home or control FN right arrow for control end, for example. All right, the next thing we want to do is switch our key commands so that we can use the function keys, you know, like F1, F2, F3, etc without having to hold down the FN key. So by default on Mac OS, you can press F11 or F12 to turn your volume down or up respectively. But if you wanted to say open voiceover utilities, which would normally be VOF8, you'd have to press VOFN F8. This while being slightly tedious on a laptop keyboard, 
definitely can be a lot more cumbersome to try and do if you like to use your Mac with an external full-size keyboard with a number pad, because on those keyboards, the FN key is where the insert key would normally be if you're used to a Windows layout. So I like to change the settings so I can just press VOF8 or, for example, VOF1 or VOF2 without having to hold down the FN key. But then if I want to say turn the volume up or down, I'll just use FN, F11, or F12, which is a lot less keys to press in those scenarios. However, for changing the volume, there is a much easier voiceover command for that. And I will show you what that is after I show you how to change this function key. It'll be great, especially if you're on a laptop with a touch bar. So to recap quickly, by default, your Mac comes set up in a way where you'd have to press VOFN F8, for example, to open voiceover utilities, or if you use VOF1 or F2 often, you'd have to press VOFN F1 or VOFN F2. Now I'm gonna show you how to switch that setting so that you can just press VOF8 or VOF1 or VOF2 without having to hold down the FN key while pressing them. All right, so let's VO right. Keyboard navigation, keyboard navigation, use keyboard navigate, keyboard shortcuts, button. And that's what we're looking for is the keyboard shortcut button. So I'm going to VO space on this. In dialog. And I'm going to VO left to go to the sidebar. Sidebar, table, row one of 13, launch pad and dock shortcuts button, selected. All right, I'm already there. So um, once again, you can down arrow. So I'm just going to press the down arrow on its own. Display short, mission control, keyboard, input sources, screenshots, presenter overlay, services short, spotlight short, accessibility shortcut, application shortcut, function keys button. And that's the one we're looking for is function keys. So now if I view right. Vertical splitter. Use F1, F2, etc. Keys as standard function keys. And you see it says use F1, F2, etc. as standard function keys. That's what we want. So view right. Use F1, F2, etc. Keys as standard function keys. Off. Switch. So we want to view space on this to turn this on. On. Use F1, F2, etc. Keys as standard function keys. Switch. And there you have it. So now that we've turned that on. I'm going to be a right and hit done. When this option is selected, press the FN key to use the special features printed on each key. Done. Button. Keyboard shortcuts. Button. There you go. So if you use, like, say, the Siri button, now you have to hold down FN to press that Siri button to get it to bring up Siri. One last thing I will point out is for volume, you don't need to use... Uh, F11, F12. You don't have to hold, you know, press FN, F11, F12. If you're a voiceover user, you can actually use voiceover plus and minus. Um, those are the two keys to the left of the backspace or delete key on the Mac keyboard. Uh, the two keys immediately to the left of it. If you hold down VO and press those two keys, you will turn the volume up and down. And that saves you, especially if you're on a touch bar, from having to do it on a touch bar. So, uh, hopefully that helps you make using your Mac go a little bit smoother. This is definitely one of the first things I do every time I reinstall Mac OS or um, set up a new computer, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you for checking out this tutorial. Hope you found that useful and helpful. If you got any tips you'd love to share with the community, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe both to the YouTube channel and to the email list found at logic.band. That way you can get a free getting started with logic course and I can let you know when the logic keyboard ninja key commands have been updated and keep you in the loop on everything going on at logic.band. Want to go deeper on this topic or anything related to Mac OS, voiceover, logic, or garage Band, then book yourself some one-on-one -on -one training by visiting logic.band slash training. Want to support us? Then visit logic.band slash support where you can make a one-time or ongoing donation. You can also join the band by visiting logic.band slash member or just hit the join button if you're watching this on YouTube and you'll get bonus tutorials, a Q&A with me, and more. Links to everything plus a blog post with supplemental information for this tutorial is in the description and as always, happy recording.